Very good afternoon and welcome to uh, this week's weekend webcast from your friends here at Martin Lynch and Sons. I'm Jonathan M0 JSX uh, here on Saturday the 9th of October uh, and we're going to have a quick look at a few uh, some products that uh, we've pulled out of the stores. Uh, we'll just have a quick look around the use section as well. So uh, it's your opportunity to visit us virtually. Now I realise that we're not the only live stream to do amateur, uh, to do amateur radio today. Uh, obviously the RSGB convention is on this weekend as well, uh, which we are the primary sponsor of. So uh, if you're watching this on catch up because you're watching the RSGB convention, absolutely fine. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, certainly that's my, uh, one of my tasks for tomorrow is to catch up with all the videos and lectures uh, from the convention that I've not been able to view because I've been here. Uh, but uh, that's certainly what I'm look, uh, looking forward to doing. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Dick's Commander's presentation, see what uh, Callum has spoken about, uh, and also what Ray Novak has been talking about with, um, I believe we've been doing stuff about POTA and SOTA and uh, uh, in general sort of operating from the field. So I'm quite interested to see what, uh, uh, what Ray has, uh, has said in his talk as well. There's loads of talks, uh, there's loads of talks going on at the RSGB convention uh, online this year. So you can find that all at the RSGB website. But back here in Staines, uh, we're going to do what we normally do on, on a Saturday. So we're going to go over a few products. We've got a few new products, a few products that have been around for a little while that we want to just highlight to you again. Uh, so welcome along and uh, uh, thank you for, for joining us. Um, we mentioned, um, well, let's say a quick hello. Hello to uh, Rob, 2E1, GDO, uh, and also uh, to Jumbo as well, and to Chris, uh, M7. MXM, so very good uh, afternoon uh, to you as well. If you are watching live, uh, do feel free to pop a, a message in the chat and uh, uh, ask any questions you want to ask as well. That's, that's what we do these lives for. Um, let's start, I mentioned about DX Commander. Um, we've, uh, we've mentioned these before here on um, YouTube. Uh, we're gonna mention them again. So DX Commander are now doing uh, 12 meter poles so up from the uh, 10 meter poles that we're used to I have to say these are quite heavy um, and there's a reason they're quite heavy they are very thick walled so unlike other 12 meter masts you often see out there uh, on the markets that have quite a thin top section um, that can't really support very much weight at the top uh, these for the Callum has developed have a really thick top section it's, um, it's going to be very difficult for me to sort of demonstrate how thick that is at the top section, but I'll do my best. Um, and you've got a very nice uh, fixing eye as well. So it's really quite thick, um, nice and solid. I know that when you're often uh, erecting a 10 meter pole of his, um, he generally recommends that you let, unfurl it uh, horizontally and then lift it. I'm not sure I'd want to do with the weight of this 12 meter pole, so I'd probably um, I'd probably look to erect it while it's, uh, uh, while it's stood up uh, vertical. But let's be honest, if you've got a pole and you're erecting uh, one of maybe Callum's vertical antennas, or maybe a, a vertical antenna of your own design, that's also possible with these, um, then you're gonna need a way of supporting parts. There's various what options you could do that if, uh, if you've got a convenient fence or something like that that you can uh, bungee the pole to, you could do that. Certainly for temporary use, that would be fine. Um, if you want something a little bit more permanent, uh, this is going to be a more of a, a, a permanent installation rather than uh, sort of set up portable, then we've got you covered for that as well. So we've got two guying options for you. I'm going to see if I can find one. I know I'm off camera, so do, I do apologise, um, but I can't see one of them. Anyway, we've got the, the DX Commander uh, guying rings in stock, uh, but we've also got uh, these... Uh, guying rings from DX Engineering. And you get a pack of five uh, of various sizes and they obviously get smaller as you go up. It's like between a magic trick here. That one's stuck in my finger. There you go. So you've got uh, a series of five guying rings from DX Engineering. And these are very inexpensive. They are uh, certainly less than about 15 pounds uh, for the set. And what's really good with these, and I'm gonna show you on, on the smallest one, that you have two options for uh, guying. So with the holes on here, you can either guy it with four guys, just one, two, three, four, or you can guy it with three, which is probably what I would do. I'd use that one, that one, and that hole. And that way you've still got uh, two holes. Hang on, if you use that one, that one, you still got three holes. You've got that one, that one, and that one uh, in order 
to use, that's, that's John over there picking a, a TS2000. Uh, you know, you've still got three holes that you can put your wire elements through. So that's a, a really, thank you John. Uh, so that's a benefit of maybe going for, for using three holes rather than four. Um, although if you wanted uh, the sort of stability and, um, uh, and the assurance that it's not gonna fall over, then maybe four guys would be the better option. But that option exists and they're all uh, all spaced properly on all of the various um, uh, guying rings so uh, regardless of uh, which sizes you go for because you might not need to use them all um, to be honest with you I, I would possibly only use maybe two or three um, maybe three on a 12 meter pole probably only two on a 10 meter pole uh, a nice easy solution um, evening to Rob uh, evening, afternoon to Rob uh, M0 A and O and also to Martin in there as well uh, M6 EYA and also to Alan, uh, FG5GP, uh, uh, and also Don's in there, hello Don, uh, N5SKT out there in Texas. So that's DX Engineering and, and uh, DX Commander Pole, the guy rings uh, as an easy portable setup, or I uh, say so you can use that fixed station as well. Uh, you'd want to think about what pegs you're going to use if you're going to do that. As a temporary setup, you could probably just use some simple 10 pegs. Um, if, uh, if you want to do more permanent installation, then maybe something more substantial uh, Barenko do a range of, uh, sort of heavy duty earth stakes that would uh, would do the trick for a permanent installation. You'd also probably want to consider if you're going to use uh, a fiberglass pole such as the 12 meter one or the 10 meter pole, uh, you probably want to also hear, uh, some Jubilee clips just to sort of go around each section just to make sure it's not going to fall down uh, in the wind. Shouldn't do, but belt and braces as they say. Uh, also uh, in stock, we've got a range of Chameleon antennas. Uh, Chameleon have been one of the most popular uh, antenna manufacturers since we started doing them. And this is the MCOM 3 Portable uh, in stock. So a nice wire antenna, um, simple to deploy if you're going out in the field. Um, in fact, you could probably attach it to a 12 meter dig smiler. Now I come to think it, of course, you could also support it in a tree as well. A nice, simple design, coax fed, um, there's not a lot I can ask really say about that. So of course, full details uh, on the website. And what we're also seeing is a lot of people wanting um, a, a telescopic aluminium or, or stainless steel whip. Um, and that's uh, a few options. Chameleon antenna do one as well. So it's a, it's a typical affair. It's uh, uh, pull it out at the top and you've got uh, a 3H thread on the bottom. Uh, for you to uh, connect it into whatever you'd like. What you could do uh, with one of these is you could go for um, a mag base. It's got a 3 8 um, socket on it um, or, um, or proper mount. Put one of those on, use a, an antenna tuner such as, you could probably even use the Mat 40 now I come to think of it. But that would work very nice as, as a portable setup. Uh, of course, you could also, if you've got the uh, Icom IC705, you could also use the AH705 that would also work rather well. Uh, Chris said he thinks about focus. Uh, let me know if I am, if anyone else thinks that. Um, what else can I mention? Let's also mention something that's been in stock um, for, you know, we've stopped been stocking these for absolutely ages. So we've got, I mean, it's just a bag of wire at the end of the day. That's what kind of we're looking at at the moment. But the uh, Alpha Delta DXLB Plus. So this is a, Basically, it's a dipole. It's a, it's a trapped, not a trapped dipole, a parallel dipole. I think they want to, us to call them now. Um, for 160, 80, 40, 20, and 10 meters. The nice thing about this is 100 foot end to end. So it is a very similar length to a full size G5RV, and you're going to get top band as well. You've got some loading coils, which is how it achieves um, sort of top band and 80 meters in, in the shorter space. Uh, nice antenna. Delta Delta makes some absolutely wonderful stuff, uh, including their, um, their DX range of antennas, DXCC being their most popular for, for 80 up to 10. But DXLB Plus, you want to get performance and you want to get top band as well, that's definitely a good option. With a tuner, you'll get it on the other bands too. So that's uh, the DXLB Plus in stock now. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, Shorecom um, instruments that um, we've had in stock for a while. So we've got the, the SF20, uh, designed for going on top of your handheld if you want to measure SWR and, uh, and power. Um, from the, well, It's actually more power than SWR, but it will, does, will give you an SWR indication as well. But yeah, measure the output power from your handhelds. 
um, SF20 uh, in stock. Uh, and um, uh, SWR power meter, uh, this is the SW102N. It's got N types on it rather than SO239s, which is nice to see. Um, designed for VHF, VHF, so 125 to 525 megahertz, uh, and will uh, cope with up to 120 watts. So that's uh, the other one, SF20. This one, the uh, I'm going to get the part number SW102N. Let's say N for N type. Um, we did a video a, a little while ago about the Nano VNA we've started doing, uh, and we did the video, and they were now stock. Well, I'm happy to say they are now back in stock. Um, so if you are after a really nice high quality uh, VNA that doesn't cost the earth then the the nano VNA is in stock I'm going to bring it a little bit closer for you um, so you get everything you see in that little kit there and I'm hoping I'm in shot there we go um, so you've got all the calibration bits as well nice high quality color screen on there's a touch screen too so uh, it really is everything that you need to get going got a charging cable in there too and a little stylus as well so you're not going to uh, I don't need to sort of be jabbing your finger into the screen, you can use a stylus. Again, back in stock, just wanted to, to bring that to your attention. Uh, and now a new product that uh, we've only started doing in the last week or so. And uh, this is in relation to the fact that uh, obviously IC9700 has been a huge success for ICOM um, and, uh, and ourselves here at Martin Inch and Sons. And the, number, the question we keep getting asked is, I've got a, currently I've got a dual band antenna for two and 70. Uh, a collinear, but I want to add 23 SEMs. My radio has 23 SEMs. I want to get 23 SEMs on. And Diamond do make a few tri band collinears that do 270 and 23. The problem is, is that they are very hard to get hold of at the moment. So um, we saw that as a, an opportunity to bring in another product line um, that will sort of bridge that gap. So we do have uh, under the Mydell brand. Um, a dual band, uh, co sorry, tri band collinear uh, for 270 and 23 SEMs. Very similar to, to some of the diamond um, offerings, but at a fraction of the cost, we have to say. Um, it is a two part antenna, so you are, you are going to have to join it. Very similar to things like the V2000 um, or the X300 or X200, so it is a, a two part antenna. Um, gain figures uh, 6.8 dbd on 2 meters, 9.2 dbd on 70 cents, and 11.8 dbd on 23 cents. So, quite impressive gain figures. Overall length 2.7 meters and a VSWR of 1.5 uh, to 1 or better. Obviously, an N type on the bottom, as we would expect. So, that's uh, uh, if you have a, a look on our website, here's the part number for you it's the Mydel 3500 N35 N. Uh, we'll find it on our website. If you're after a tri-band uh, collinear antenna, that's definitely a good option. Uh, let's turn our attention uh, back to the um, comments. Uh, Rob asking, how long is the whip? And yes, yeah, the 17 foot whip, as, as Don says. Um, you, yeah, and as Don says, you could do the super antenna base. So you could, if you wanted to, if you already got the super antenna kit, um, you could substitute out the, uh, uh, the supplied whip for the community antenna one. And that's going to better your performance, you know, a bit more in the air, less reliant on the loading coil. That's going to work very well indeed. So definitely a, a very good option. Uh, finally, one product that I want to mention, I can't show you. We're not here anyway. So I'm going to grab the camera. I'm going to go to it because um, this weekend, it's uh, as we've previously mentioned, it's the RSGB convention. And well, I've not worked the NRC from my home station. So I thought, well, what I'd do is I would fire up my uh, IC, um, IC7300 at home. Um, we're running the RSBA1 software. Um, so that is, uh, th this is the whole point of the RSBA1 software is enable you to remote control uh, your home station from afar. So this is, this is my radio at home, uh, listening to um, uh, GB3RS at the NRC. Uh, and I did work them earlier on using this setup. Uh, so it is a, a really nice solution. It works with most uh, modern ICOM radios. Some radios, much like the, the 7610 or the 9700, or, or even the IC705, have the server functionality built into the radio. So you don't need anything other than the radio and your internet connection uh, in order to get this working. Uh, with the 7300, you do need a computer sat next to the radio to act as the server. 
uh, which is what I do with mine. But this is uh, a quick, uh, just showing that it does work. This is uh, you know, live uh, listening to 40 meters. Um, and just to say that it really does work really rather well. So uh, that's the RSBA1 software. It's sold as a package uh, with um, the RC28, oh, RC28 controller, he says. I do apologize for my, um, uh, my dodgy camera work there. Let's get that back in place, there you go. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's sold with the RC20, which is the remote encoder knob. I haven't got one set up just there, but uh, uh, that's how they work. Um, let's have a look, see. Uh, prices, all available on our website, hamradio.co.uk. That's where to get the prices from. Uh, Don asks, uh, will it work over Bluetooth on 705? It won't work over Bluetooth, Don, but um, it, the using the IC705's uh, internal Wi-Fi, so you just connect that up to your Wi-Fi network at home, and then that's uh, sufficient and that works very well uh, for it. Lovely. Uh, let's have a quick look around uh, the use section. Um, so have a very quick look. I'm, I'm very conscious that uh, you might be eager to get back to uh, some of the videos um, from the RSGB. Um, so I'm going to have a very quick look around. We're going to start with uh, this uh, Yaesu FT857D. Uh, so this is, of course, the, the HF, um, VHF, UHF offering uh, from Yaesu, compatible with the ATAS as well. Uh, if you saw the video that, uh, that I did a couple of years ago or so now, um, I run one of these in my own car. I have done for, for many years now with the ATAS. If you want a mobile setup for, for VHF, HF, VHF, UHF, then look no further than an 857. In stock now with the box 599. Uh, the Icom ID4100, now these weren't very long lasting here in the UK. Brand new, they, uh, uh, Icom soon discontinued them, but uh, they are still a very popular radio if you're after something with a nice small control panel uh, and, uh, and that will do D star and FM dual band option with built in GPS. So you could do that near repeater functionality that uh, Icom is renowned for uh, £299. That's a very good price. Uh, our own John here, uh, 2E0E0K, okay, runs one of these in his car because he likes the small head uh, in, his, uh, in his new motor. It works very well for him. So that's uh, ID4100, fully boxed and complete £299. Uh, also in stock, a TS590SG. So, of course, this is the latest and greatest version of uh, the 590. Uh, I mean, they are fantastic. The audio you get off of these is fantastic. It's a CW operator's dream for £999. Again, fully boxed. Another 857D, maybe slightly better condition than the previous one. Uh, same price, 599 in the box. Uh, FTDX 3000 just sat down here. So this is uh, the baby 5000, as we always say. It's got the very same uh, DSP and noise reduction you get on a 5000. Um, the addition of a, a real-time scope um, uh, with 100 watts rather than 200. Yours for 1099, again, boxed and complete. Uh, FT8970, so the bigger brother to the uh, 857, but very similar otherwise. Uh, it is um, this one fully boxed and complete. Um, 20, uh, HF and 6, you get 100 watts out. It's 50 watts out on 2 meters, 20 watts out on uh, 70 cents. Uh, if you can find them, and they are getting quite rare, but you can put the internal batteries in these uh, and operate them completely portable. Um, they are getting quite rare, those batteries. So. Uh, you might struggle to, but £549 uh, gets you that to 897 uh, What else? Uh, TS2000 from Kenwood, uh, 3999 If you want the flagship from Kenwood at uh, uh, saving over what you pay brand new, then uh, don't look any further. 200 watts out the back. A lovely touch screen that's uh, nice and high, uh, high colours as well. Uh, a, good, a good purchase for, for just under 4000 uh, let's move uh, round. We've got FT991A just out there uh, for 1099. HF, VHF, UHF uh, with C4 FM system fusion on 77s and 2 meters uh, with that nice real time spectrum scope as we get from the A version. Uh, yours for 1099 fully boxed. Uh, similar offering from ICOM, the IC7100. The only thing you don't have here is a tuner. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, but this has got D star on it rather than uh, fusion. But HF6, four meters here in the uh, UK and Europe, uh, two meters and 70 cents, 799 pounds. That's a saving now of about 300 pounds over what you pay uh, brand new. They've gone up in price brand new. We've uh, kept the price down on the used ones as far as we can. And I believe this one is only a matter of months old. So that one really is uh, 
a good purchase over uh, the brand new retail price. Uh, I mentioned the fact that the 7100 doesn't have ATU. Well, you could use the ODG 87000, designed, of course, for the IC7000, but this will work with pretty much any ICOM radio produced in the last 30 years or so. Uh, yours for just £119. That's, a, again, a good buy. Uh, also from LDG, we've got the YT1200, designed for FT450, uh, FT950, and FTDX1200, and also the YT100, designed for the 857 and the 897, and the FT100, if memory serves me right. Uh, Flex 6400, the uh, uh, base SDR station uh, from, uh, from uh, Flex Radio in America. 2749, a uh, good price, nice so coloured touchscreen. Uh, it's full specs on the website hamradio.co.uk. Uh, FT450D, there's a little a while ago we had uh, stacks upon stacks of these. Uh, we've, um, we've slimmed down them, we've only got a couple of these left now. Uh, £549. Uh, this one doesn't have the box but has got the mic manual and DC cable. Uh, a lovely compact HF and 6 metre radio. Uh, you'll know the story. I had one of these uh, when I first came to the hobby. Uh, the DX Vision that went to Christmas Island 10 years ago now, I think it was, uh, used these. Uh, a solid radio, nice and reliable. What more can you want? And finally, in our use section, of course, so everything is available online uh, to view at hamradio.co.uk slash used. Uh, but finally, Pelstar AT1500DT. Uh, this is the uh, differential tuner from Pelstar capable of uh, one and a half kilowatts uh, through nice uh, proper roller inductor. Um, it's, they, they just are fantastic. They will cope with balance line as well as coax. Uh, so if you wanted to run ladder line right into the shack, you can do so uh, with the with the power. So it's got the internal uh, ballon uh, and able to, to do that. Oh, actually, we've also got a, a BT1500, so the, the later version of uh, sort of the same design as well. Both. Uh, both in stock uh, right now. Okay, I'm going to pop this camera back here. I'm just going to walk back over and uh, and then we'll sort of finish up. I think just uh, uh, we've been going for just over 20 minutes, which uh, is a good time, I think. Let's um, have a quick look. See here then. Uh, afternoon, Tim G5TM. Oh, hello, my camera's moved over there. Uh, afternoon, to Tim. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, welcome along. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Tim on YouTube, go and, and subscribe to Tim. He does some fantastic antenna videos. Um, and I particularly liked his... Um, uh, John is trying to highlight the fact we've got an FT3 in stock as well. We do have an FT3 in the use section. You can see it on the website, hamradio.co.uk slash used. Uh, yeah, back to, back to Tim. Yeah, Tim does some fantastic antenna videos. Um, I particularly like his, his uh, videos where he goes out portable or, or mobile in his, uh, uh, in his car. But I think he needs uh, an ATAS for his uh, 891, if I'm completely honest. Um, Don uh, highlighted the fact that uh, FT857Ds are hard to find in the US. Um, they are quite rare over here as well, uh, Don. It's not just out in the States. Obviously, Icon, uh, Icon, Yesu discontinued them a couple of years ago now. Uh, and since then, there, there's not really much in the market now that does what an 857 did. Uh, so they do come up used, uh, as we see, but they never last very long. Uh, we, did, um, have, um, we did have another one last night, but it sold... Uh, over the uh, online over the web. Uh, Clive, what's the antenna rotator on top shelf in the corner? It's been on show for years, must be going cheap. Uh, the antenna rotator in the corner is our demo, but we do actually have, at the moment in our use section, a used G1000. I say used, it's actually unused. It's uh, never been out of the box, apart from to be put on the shelf here. Uh, but that's on the website, it's a G1000DXC. Um, it uh, is supplied in an as new condition, uh, if you are after a, a rotator. Um, Paul says, any new speakers for the FT991A? Um, we don't have any of the matching speakers. That would be the SP10. Uh, we don't have any uh, used uh, SP10 stock. We do have them brand new. Um, they're just over sort of £100 brand new. Um, afternoon to, to Peter. That's uh, M0PGW. Uh, and hello to uh, oh, TC, uh, kg 4 b Ah, oh, hello to you as well, and uh, hello to Mike as well. G3 PGA down in um, Devon. Um, right, I'm going to um, wrap it up at this point. Unless there's any final questions that come in or you want to go and grab something to, to show, uh, I'll, I'll wrap this up. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed to us here on YouTube and you haven't got that uh, bell notification switched on, uh, make sure you do. And that way you'll get a notification every time that we go live or upload a video. Of course, we do our normal something for the weekend videos uh, on a Friday. 
Uh, so make sure that uh, make sure you're subscribed uh, to that. Of course, you can also uh, subscribe to our mailing list as well. Go to our website, hamradio.co.uk. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. There's a yellow banner. Pop your email address in there and you'll be signed up to our weekly email. So we email you once a week. Uh, we bring you some products and an update from your friends here in Staines. Um, and uh, next week, uh, I'm off. So it'll be Tony in the, in the hot seat for uh, the uh, weekend webcast. Uh, so be nice to him. I know there's an... I know there's, it's this weird thing happening with our audience where you tend to be either a Tony fan or a me fan, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, if, uh, if you're tuning in for Tony next week, then absolutely perfect. Uh, he will be here uh, next Saturday afternoon um, doing, doing the live video and doing going around the used items as well and uh, much what I do as well. Um, let's have a look, see. Kevin asks about the ID52. No, afraid not, Kevin. Um, it's uh, don't. Get me wrong, as soon as we've got them, we will be shouting about the fact that we've got them uh, because we want to see them as much as you do. Uh, let's be honest, I want to get my hands on one and, and have a good play. Uh, we haven't got them yet. Uh, they haven't arrived in stock. Um, the latest update from Icom uh, is hopefully by the end of the year we should see stock, uh, but uh, uh, don't, don't hold me to that. Uh, Icom are, um, are doing their best. I know there's a few out there. I know that um, uh, Andreas, uh, M0FXB, has got one. Uh, and a few others that they've imported from Japan. But in terms of uh, actual availability in the UK, not yet, but soon. If you've got a deposit on one, we will, of course, let you know as soon as, you, uh, as, soon as they arrive in stock, as soon as we know they're on the way. Uh, if you haven't got a deposit on one, £25, get yourself uh, on the list and uh, just reserve to one of the first units when they arrive. Right, um, thanks very much for all your comments. Thanks to Kevin for, for that question as well. Uh, I say, make sure that you're subscribed to us here on YouTube and uh, you're getting, uh, and make sure you hit that bell icon as well so you get notified, notified when we go live. And until next week, thanks very much. And if you haven't already, uh, on 40 meters, 7113.9, go and work the NRC. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.